Howdy once again, it's Tubal Cain, and this time with episode number 19 of my series entitled What Makes It Work? And specifically now, in this video, we're going to cover what makes a speedometer work. Now who cares, says you. All modern speedometers are probably electronic. We don't care two hoots about the old mechanical ones. Well, I still do. So you got a chance to turn this boring stuff off if you want, but for those of you with inquiring minds, stick around and let's take this apart and see just what it is that makes it run. When I bought this at a flea market for 10 bucks, I asked the man uh, what it came out of, and I cleaned this up quite a bit, even though it's rusty. And uh, he, he said that uh, it was his dad's and it came out of a Ford from the 19... 50s, 53 Ford. I don't believe it because I don't think those speedometers went up to 120 miles an hour. There's no markings on this, but this little chrome thing here reminds me of a Ford, but I may be wrong. Also notice that the uh, zeros are in a smaller size than the uh, other numbers. And if anybody can tell me for sure what this is off of, let me know. Somebody said it was out of a Corvair. Somebody else said it was out of a um, a Mustang. Well, it looks way too old to be out of a Mustang, and that I don't believe that's any kind of Mustang. But anyway, that's irrelevant. It's a mechanical type, and I'm going to take it apart here in a minute. But let me just tell a real quick story that it was so common years ago for used car dealers to spin these back and reduce the miles so that they could sell the car at a higher price than what it would be worth after it had a hundred thousand miles because years ago a car with a hundred thousand or ninety thousand miles was absolutely worn out because that's the kind of car we drove when I was a teenager and believe me if you had a 49 Chevy with 95,000 miles on it it was shot but it was still serviceable for a teen so anyway um, you can't run these Backward. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Uh, they, they always talked about spinning them back. Well, putting a motor on them and, and spinning them back while they're in the car, I, which is, I don't believe is practical. I'll prove that momentarily. But these normally went into a speedometer shop, and a speedometer repair shop was, was a thinly disguised uh, lock shop that also spun these back. My dad had a good Christian friend who was in a parts department at a Chevy dealership, and what he saw go on in the late 50s was so disturbing to him, he moved to another town, to another dealership, about 25 miles from where I grew up. But we still knew him throughout our childhood, a wonderful man. I'm going to call him Don, because that's his name. But anyway, he told about uh, them spinning these back. And I believe that they had to take them apart to do this. Now, at that time, I believe it probably was not illegal to, to spin them back. It was just um, uh, dishonest. Just dishonest. They were cheaters and liars is what they were. All right, let's spin this one back. Also, for you younger guys that haven't seen old speedometers, they only went up to 99.9 .9 or... A series of nines. They, they didn't go past 100,000 miles because basically a car didn't last that long. So now they all go to a million miles. But I made this little adapter, where is it here, to run this off of an electric drill and my Fordham grinder. And the cable, there was a speedometer cable, and I don't know if there still is or not, but a flexible type cable like this that came from the transmission whether it was automatic or manual, and then up into the speedometer, and there's a square hole in there. So I had to make that little brass adapter there. And by putting that in, now I'm going to run it in reverse, because, uh, well, I'm going to do both. Counterclockwise is the correct direction of rotation. So looking at it now from the front, using this little craftsman drill, they can go about 85 miles an hour. Now watch the odometer because this is really two instruments in one. It's a um, measurement of your ground speed and 
the number of miles For reference, this electric drill runs at, let's see, 1200 RPM. Now let me switch to the Fordham. The Fordham grinder runs at 18,000 RPM. That's almost, uh, what, eight or nine times as fast as what I was running at. Uh, with the Craftsman drill and this is in the reverse direction now so the the needle will not read but the odometer will spin backwards and why am I doing this well just to show you how long it would take a dealer or anybody to spin the speedometer or the odometer back it would take I think days so let's try that take a long time to do that in fact sometimes they I suppose could run it forward because they were closer to their desired setting going forward than backward uh, what with all of their dishonesty at some of those dealerships years ago there are they of course are totally honest at modern dealerships but that's just to illustrate how uh, how it could be done but I don't think it was done that way but there are probably some some guys in the garage that, their home garage that tried to set them back before they sold them as used cars. What I'm going to do now is uh, take this apart. I've got a couple screws here. Let's see what this thing is. I believe that's an oiler. And occasionally you had to lubricate your speedometer cable if you remember, but you usually use graphite. But I had some cars, or I had a car, my Renault Dauphine, it made so much noise in the winter that I had to disconnect the speedometer because the cable just howled, absolutely howled. It was painful. Then uh, this is crimped, so I will have to uncrimp it to get it apart. So let's try that. All right, I took these two screws out, and this is the last tab that needs on crimping and you know what Geraldo should do this this is the first time this has been opened in uh, 50 years now I don't expect it to say Ford or GM or anything like that on the inside because this of course would have been made by a supplier And there's the marking, Autolite, La Crosse, Wisconsin, where they made Heilemann's Old Style Beer. Now that leads me to believe that it's a Ford product because Ford owned Autolite at one time. Not that they uh, wouldn't sell to other manufacturers as well, but I'm saying this is a Ford. And there it is. That's the bezel and all the, the part that you'd actually see behind the steering wheel. Very interesting. Now I'm going to talk about the speedometer first rather than the odometer because it's really two separate things. Now the lighting is uh, another thing here. Notice that uh, it took four bulbs. So there was a bulb here and here, and one side was green. That just fell out. Green. Now, I thought these were the turn lights, but the one on the other side is red, but it's, it's so frosted over you can't see the red, but that, that's a red lens. So I don't know, maybe that was for the bright lights, because your bright's uh, indicator was red at one time, but I don't know for sure what, what those were for. That's just a guess. But these were the uh, instrument panel lights. There would have been two bulbs there. But interestingly enough, 
this plastic here is kind of like the old Sylvania halo light. Do you remember Sylvania telev televisions that had a halo light around the screen? And it, as far as I can tell, it diffused the light all the way around. And then some came through here for the odometer. So that's how the lighting apparently worked. Do you know what were some of the most miserable moments of my life? Working under the dashboard of a car. My legs over the rear of the uh, seat, my head under there, blood rushing into my head, couldn't see what I was doing, didn't have a decent flashlight, knuckles all bloody trying to take a radio out or something like that. It was most unpleasant. Now everything is so uh, dependable. You don't have to work under there like, like we did years ago. For instance, you once a year you had to put a new vibrator tube into your radio, and it wasn't easy to get those radios out, as you recall. So what we have in here, and I believe this is a YouTube exclusive, and uh, a first for YouTube, what I'm doing here. But as this spins, it spins a magnet. So there's a little magnet inside of that cup. I don't know if that's going to show up or not. But let me put uh, the drill back on here. Now I'm using a rubber hose so that it doesn't vibrate so violently. Watch the odometer now. Remember, now we're going about 70 miles an hour. Let's look at how the instrument is uh, constructed. First of all, remember that you get no reading in reverse, although your odometer would, uh, would reverse, but not the needle. There is a stop for that, and the stop is right here. And it will go around a full 360 degrees, which is farther than the 120. I thought I remember speedometers having a peg at the top speed and we would talk about pegging the speedometer. Although I never had a car that went that fast, but you know what crazy things teenagers do. But on the back, this part is die cast, that's zinc. You got some brass parts here. And then uh, the working parts here there is a cup here made out of aluminum. It's called the speed cup. And inside of that, there is a magnet. And you really can't hardly see the magnet. And it isn't a very strong magnet, but it's a bar magnet that is going crossways. I'm touching it now, but you, you really can't see it on the video. I'll talk more about the odometer here in a second. But it's important to note now that the shaft here does not go clear through. That is, the shaft that the needle is on only goes in and is fastened to the speed cup. So there's no direct connection here between this end here that gets spun and the needle. The movement is caused by the magnetism. Note the inspector's number six, who probably inspected it or calibrated it or something like that. Would you think that the uh, inspector number six is still living? If so, she'd have to be 120 years old, I think. I got sidetracked again. But my dad uh, asked, Dad, how, how does the speedometer work? Dad, how does the speedometer work? Well, there's a little magnet in there that causes a needle to go around as far as he got with it. And since I was eight years old, it was a good enough answer for me. But 
as we spin this, we're spinning the magnet, and then uh, there is a uh, eddy currents that are induced inside of here that cause the cup to turn. But there is a resistance to the cup turning by the hairspring. Can you see the little hairspring there? It looks almost like you'd see in a watch. Yeah, there you go. That's the resistance, and also it causes the needle to come back to zero when the car stops, and there is no more uh, magnetism induced in here, no more eddy currents. Now that isn't particularly easy to understand, and my explanation probably might not have been that good, I don't know. But in this picture here, and I'll put a still of this someplace in the video as well, you can see again here that the needle only goes as far as the cup, and then here's where the speedometer cable comes in. We've got a gear there, of course, that goes over to the odometer, which I'll talk about here in a minute. There's the spring, there's the cup, and the cup is made of, uh, the inner cup here is made of aluminum, and this outer part here, right here, is steel. Where's my magnet? That's steel. The cup is aluminum. Now there was a lot of mathematics involved in getting this thing calibrated so it would tell how fast a car was going. A tire size was important and remember there were different gears that you could put in the transmission for uh, different reasons, I suppose, uh, for tire size and different things like that. And they were color-coded, at least in General Motors car, they were color-coded. How accurate are our speedometer? Remember, they never were truly accurate. Sometimes along the highway they would have mile markers where you could check your, your speed and your odometer so that uh, you wouldn't get caught speeding and uh, think that you, uh, and argue with the policeman. I hope I explained this about the eddy currents and the magnetism, but it is a little bit difficult to understand. And right here is where the uh, lubrication point was with that little part, if I can find it right here, that has a little wick in it. And I think you could reach up in the dash and take this out, the same as you would reach up in the dash and change those bulbs and when you came back down, your knuckles and your wrists were all bloody, if you recall. Now let's turn our attention to the odometer. And you can see here that uh, when I turn the speedometer right down in this area here, there's a, a worm and a gear and then another one here. And that changes... Uh, this one changes the direction. And if we look inside of uh, with this picture here, you're also going to see if this is constructed the same, that we have a little gear here and a shaft and a gear right on the end of, uh, of this. I'm not going to take that apart to show you, although I should do a cutaway of it, but that's a lot of work. I kind of don't want to destroy this, but yet, what good is it? So anyway, when that turns, you can see that this little shaft here slowly turns. There's a gear train in here, an idler gear, I suppose, that gets this going in the right direction. And uh, the entire drum here rotates. I'd like to take that apart. I'll see if I can get it out of there. There were companies, I believe, that sold numbers that could be glued on there. It was a little a strip of numbers, and perhaps some uh, devious people changed uh, the readings in that manner. And really, you'd only have to change the outer two. If, but if the color didn't match, you'd want to go ahead and, and change all of them, or that might be a... Uh, red light for the the buyer but they did other things too in used cars they'd put on a brand new brake pedal 
so that the rubber uh, wasn't worn out because normally the, the rubber on a brake pedal got pretty worn out at 90,000 miles but they'd put a brand new pad on there and maybe a new armrest and other things that, that made the car seem much better than it was. New rugs, new mats and so on. It was a, a scheme is what it was. Still is probably. If you looked on the back pages of Popular Science back in the 40s and 50s, you would see that you could take a correspondence course on how to repair uh, <laughs> speedometers, but I think it was a thinly disguised, again, uh, part of the scheme for people to set these back. Because I never did have a speedometer that had to be repaired, other than that, than that Renault that made the squeak so bad, but that was the cable. All right, there's the entire drum, and I now have the ability to set this thing back to 9,000 miles. Step right up, ladies and gentlemen, I got a brand new Plymouth, lightly used, 9,000 miles. Oh, we'll make it 8,492. 9,000 would be too suspicious. The white, of course, is tenths, tenths of a mile. You guys in Europe, we didn't do kilometer per hour until, I don't know when they changed that on American speedometers. This is really a counter, is what it is. I think, think it's probably the same as counters you see in a bailing machine or just about any kind of machine. And I think, I'm, I can't really explain how it works, but let me show you what's inside of it. And I had to drive that shaft out of there. And these are little zinc um, discs or drums or whatever you want to call them. And it's quite complex. But when we take the first one off, that's the tenths you're going to see that there's a little plate like this between each one of them and there's a ring gear. When I take this one off, I gotta put my glasses on to even see this. There's a little bit of a pinion gear in there. Wow, this is complex. So we got a ring gear, and then same thing. And that's. Let's take a look at how this odometer is built. And I took it off of its original shaft and put it on a drill bit here that was a little smaller in diameter, so there's nothing pressed on there. And I'm leaving off uh, one of the little uh, drums so I can talk about it. But if you look at uh, each one of these, these are all the same. The black ones are all the same. The white one is a, a little bit different, the, the tenths, because that is the driven one. And it is driven by the gear. There's some little dogs on the end of that that line up with uh, the slot in there. So that's how the whole thing is driven. And this brass gear, of course, is driven off of... this gear on the speedometer itself. Each one of the little drums is also a ring gear on the inside. Reminds me of the old uh, wheels on the real lawnmowers when he took them apart. So there's a ring gear here. I believe that little, the small hole is used probably during assembly to line them all up. But then there's another uh, little gear right here, and this is all die cast, really rather precision, but that's a split gear. That is a six tooth on one side and three teeth on the other side. Now I didn't know there could be a gear with three teeth, so maybe it's not called a gear, but can you see how that is split? 
And when it's assembled, again, it has to be assembled with the six teeth down and going into the other uh, ring gear as such. I suppose that's about as close as I can get to it. Now when I assemble the next drum, the three tooth gear has to line up with this little notch. And that's kind of tricky to do. Let's see if I can get it the first time. I usually don't. And I've had this whole thing apart. It gave me a headache. I had to go up and take a nap. I also notice that I'm holding all of these little uh, discs that have a notch on them with a drill bit. And they originally fit right in here, or were held right here, if you recall. And uh, now I will put... Well, I have to take off this last one, and I'm going to put the, uh, the tenths wheel on. As such. Notice now, as I rotate the top one here, that that little gear itself is rotating. Very intricate mechanism. Of course, through the speedometer window, only one row of numbers is showing up. I put a little mark on the palm run vise to indicate that, so I can take this off. Now watch what happens as I rotate the tenths wheel. As it comes around to nine, that little three-tooth gear causes the uh, six-tooth gear to turn and the six turn. Now I'll go another revolution. Seven. Eight. Nine. And when we bring it around now, the uh, the drum right below it also will rotate. Oops, that top thing slipped out. And so on. I don't know if that made any sense to you, but that's essentially how the counter on the odometer works. As you can see, absolutely no effort or expense was spared in preparing this teaching aid. And I did cut this out indeed. And now you can see the gear train. There is a gear on the, uh, the shaft here that is turned. And it in turn rotates this, this shaft here with a, with a gear here and then a worm over here. And then yet another gear. And then down here. A worm, and then an idler gear, and then yet another gear on the final shaft to the counter. Pretty awesome. Very intricate. And very rugged. Because these in my uh, experience, never did require any repair. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. That is how an Autolite speedometer works. And I had to sacrifice this beautiful Autolite Ford speedometer in order to do it. I hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure and watch my hundreds of other videos, 700 to be exact. This is Tubal Cain saying so long for now. And beware if you buy a used car whose odometer is slightly crooked like this, because then you know it's been tampered with.